I'm here at The Roost, a project that we just finished up with, which was a conversion from an old 1940s garage into an apartment for the homeowner's uh, elderly mother to move into. And I'm going to talk today about alternatives to paint and why we need to consider some of these alternatives. We're all familiar with paint. Everyone has it on their walls or uses it to protect their furniture or their woodwork. And every design show on TV uses paint to create a dramatic change in a room. And it does do that really well. But there's some things about the acrylic latex paint that we use that you may not know. And there's some amazing alternatives out there to use that can do all the same great things as paint, but without the harm. I just recently learned that acrylics or latex paint is full of microplastics. In fact, acrylic is really just a type of plastic. Most of its components are made from petrochemicals or fossil fuels, which also means that it's carbon intensive to create. There are also many forms of man-made chemicals that are put into these paints to make them smooth or to dry faster or to make them the color that you want. Some of these chemicals, especially the alkyl phenol ethoxylates, have been shown to be endocrine disruptors and have already been banned in some places like the European Union and in Japan. So if you want to avoid these chemicals and if you want to avoid microplastics, and you should, then you might want to look at some of these alternatives to paint. Wait, let's go back. Why should we avoid microplastics? Microplastics have been getting a lot of news lately, and that's because they're beginning to show up everywhere. They're in the soils, in the oceans, in our foods, the plants and animals that we eat. Microplastics in the form of acrylic paint are even starting to show up in human blood. Plastic. In our blood. And it is known that commercial grade exterior paints, like those on boats or on the outsides of buildings, are contributing to major ocean pollution. According to the Parsons Healthy Materials Lab, particles of paint account for more than half of the microplastics that end up in the world's waterways every year. I'll link an article from Science Direct in the description if you want to nerd out on all those details. For individuals using residential paint, like you and me, when we wash our brushes or cups or the little bit of paint left in the bucket, it goes to our municipal water treatment system if you're washing it out in the sink and it goes down the drain. The majority of municipal water treatment systems in the United States does not filter out for microplastics. This microplastic will then settle down into the bottom into what they call the sludge. This sludge is then removed from the water treatment system and placed out among our agricultural fields as a fertilizer. So you can guess where the microplastics go from there. They leach into the watersheds or are absorbed by the plants that we then eat. I was shocked to learn this about paint. I've been using acrylic latex paint for years, and I even thought I was using the healthier version by going with low or no VOC paint. And acrylic paint is so easy to use, it's easy to clean, it's easy to buy, you can buy it right off the shelf, there's so many colors. I just didn't even know to question that there was an alternative or that there should be an alternative. But when I learned what it's actually made of and the harm that that can do to us or the world around us, I decided I needed to change what I used to cover my drywall and my woodwork projects. And I didn't even touch on the effects on your home when you put a plastic coating on your walls, especially in new construction. I won't get into it in this video, but just know that it prohibits vapor transmission through your walls, which is something that almost every climate needs. So what are some of the alternatives? In this video, I'll focus on products that you can use on your walls and just give you a quick rundown of what those products are. Alternatives to latex paint will often be mineral, clay, or plant-based. And the colors will often come from oxides or natural pigments and sometimes plants. This gives you an amazing array of beautiful earth-based colors to choose from. And these paints don't emit any harmful gases or fumes as they dry. They are easy to apply and don't require any special equipment. And some mineral paints are resistant to moisture naturally, so they make a good product to put in a humid or high traffic area. Most of these paints can be used over the top of previously painted walls without any special preparation, although some may require you to degloss a really shiny area first. Most of these natural paints come with a matte finish. This finish is because of the minerals or the clay being used as the binder in the paint. But the matte finish plays really well with light in beautiful ways, absorbing the light and reducing any glare. In fact, most galleries and museums will use a mineral-based paint on their walls to reduce the glare so that the art can really be the showcase. But you can add a glaze for sheen or durability on most products. Okay, here are some of the paint alternatives that apply to your walls just like a standard paint. Clay paint, milk paint, which is made from the milk protein casein, silica paints, which are made from the potash, which is an abundant mineral, 
lime wash paints and linseed oil paints, which I haven't had the chance to use yet, but they look really beautiful, so I hope to get to use them soon. And there's a company called Eco Safety Products that makes a product called Dura Soy One, which is a paint that's most similar to what you might be used to off of the shelf, but it uses soy as the base for the protein, and they use oxides and minerals and plants to uh, color the products. That's what we used in this space here. I've used the Durasoy product in several houses now, and I've always been happy with it. Uh, professional painters have used it for me, and they've enjoyed it and liked it. It covers really well. You can roll it on or spray it on just like a conventional paint. And their paints and stains are made in Arizona and then shipped pretty quickly to anywhere across the country. The Durasoy One paint also comes in flat, eggshell, and semi-gloss sheens. And they can color match any color from any other paint company that you might want. We used the flat ceiling white paint and the eggshell sheen to a matched color on the walls in the nook. This wall in my house is a clay paint by a company called BioShield. I applied it just like any other paint with brushes and a roller, and I painted it on over a layer of latex paint without any special preparation other than making sure the wall was clean. I do love the matte finish and the feel of the paint, and the color seems to subtly shift with the sunlight throughout the day. It does tend to absorb oils though, so if you're putting it near food preparation or in a high traffic area, I would suggest protecting it with a glaze. Lime is a mineral that is naturally antifungal and antibacterial because of its high pH level, and it's water resistant. Hospitals used to paint their walls with a lime wash because of this feature. A lime wash paint is a pigment added to a watered down lime putty, and then it is brushed onto a wall with a large brush using varying strokes. As lime cures, it begins to turn back into hardened limestone, which is what makes it somewhat water resistant. So this is a good paint for high humidity or moisture prone areas like bathrooms and kitchens. Since it's applied with a large brush, it tends to lend itself to a textured appearance and you can control the patterns during the application to be quite prominent or subtle. Either way is a warm and beautiful and adds interest to your walls. Unless you live in a cool, funky city with a green building supplies store, you will probably have to purchase most of these products online, either from the manufacturer's website or from green building supply websites online. I do want to quickly mention another method for covering and coloring your walls besides paint, which would be plaster. There are a few companies in the United States that make plastering systems, either out of lime or clay, like Earth House Lime Plasters and American Clay. These plastering systems typically need a skilled craftsperson for the application of the product though. They are applied thicker than a paint and use tools like trowels to apply the plaster to a wall. You often will get more texture than with a paint, although you can apply it to a smooth finish if that's what you're looking for. I'll do more videos that go into details about plaster in the future. If you have any experience using any of these alternatives that I mentioned or any others that I didn't get to, please drop your thoughts in the comments and I'll provide links in the description to the products and resources I talked about. I hope this was helpful to get you thinking about alternatives to conventional paint. So go paint the town red now, but don't use plastic.